It's the culmination of a journey. 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 It's an honor of a lifetime. Life. Gentlemen, this competition has been successful beyond anything I ever dreamt of. Here's to a great match. Get it in, it's in. Well, what a thing to do at a time like this. Well, that's what the Ryder Cup is all about, and the emotion is just building here for the Europeans. This looks good. Oh, my! Can you believe it? Oh, my goodness gracious me! I'm excited to be here in 2023. Excited to be here in 2023. All roads lead to this. So here we are, the eternal city, ancient and iconic. Long since a stage to gladiatorial contest, now host for the first time to golf's most compelling team event. It's Marco Simone Golf and Country Club, bathed in autumn sunlight, primed to welcome the very finest competitors in the game. I think the Ryder Cup is one of the greatest sporting events in the world. The crowds and the players behave at a Ryder Cup quite unlike how they behave at, at any other golfing events, and that's what leads to the magic. And Rome will be extraordinary. E questo è quello che vogliono gli spettatori del golf. Vogliono vivere eh, delle emozioni irripetibili essere ricordato in questo senso quello di aver prodotto per questo paese per il mondo un evento indimenticabile Welcome everyone to the opening press conference of the 2023 Ryder Cup here at Marco Simone Golf and Country Club on my far right Zach Johnson of Team USA and to my immediate right Luke Donald of Team Europe. Zach, how is the journey over for the team and how are you all feeling about the week ahead? The journey getting here has been quite long. This place never disappoints and I know my players feel the same way. It is almost surreal and it is just extremely special. France was amazing, Ireland was special, so was Wales and Scotland and the other ones I played at. So I know Italy will be nothing but that but special and I can't wait to It's here, it's finally here. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of anxiety, a lot of excitement. It was a long build up, 14 months for me. Um, a lot of preparation, a lot of work, um, a lot of uh, trying to put together a plan to kind of give the guys the best opportunity to succeed. So many different emotions, but just excited that the moment had finally come and looking forward to it finally uh, to get going. Um, you know, I think the players are raring to go and it's going to be a fun spectacle. Thank you, everyone. Zach, Thank you. Pleasure. we wish you Thank all you. the best this week. I'm really proud to present the United States team the Ryder Cup. Two years ago in Wisconsin, a dominant USA side strode to victory. The scoreline, a record-breaking 19 points to nine. One, two, three, good. Of that triumphant team, just seven members would tee up in Rome. Cantlay, Kepka, Morikawa, Scheffler, Schofle, Spieth, and Thomas. Alongside them, four rookies and the returning Ricky Fowler, whose last continental cap came back in 2018. This is Team USA. This is a bunch of guys that uh, they're going to do the talking on the golf course. Their golf clubs are going to do the talking, and I'm just going to be there to take whatever difficult circumstance, whatever uh, may arise, and put the onus on me. I'm going to let them do what they do and do, do what they do best, and that's play their game of golf. As for their opponents, a similar situation. Seven were to reprise their role from Whistling Straits. Fleetwood, Fitzpatrick, McElroy, Rahm, Lowry, Hovland, and Hatton. Having missed out two years ago, 
Justin Rose returned to the fold, along with four newcomers. There wasn't too many alphas within the group, to be honest. You know, they're alphas on the golf course, but, you know, off the course, a lot of these guys just wanted to lead by example and lead with their clubs. We were there to really avenge a lot of the hurt from 2020, ride a couple of Whistling Straits and win back the cup. That's great, guys, thank you. <laughs> Perhaps the most significant change from 2021 was to come outside the ropes. An anticipated attendance of more than 270,000 people from 100 different countries. There is nothing quite like Friday morning and the first tee at the Ryder Cup. To the surprise of many, European captain Luke Donald had opted to open with foursomes for the first time since 1993. A mouth-watering morning lay ahead, and at 7.35 local time on Friday morning, the die was cast. The honor of striking the opening blow in the 2023 Ryder Cup, falling to the world number one. On the tee, electing to play from the USA, Scotty Scheffler. So up steps the world number one, first tee at the Ryder Cup. Well, this is awesome is what it is, and it's amazing, and it's awesome to see. Alongside Scheffler in the opening match, rookie Sam Burns. The American duo faced with England's Tyrrell Hatton and the talismanic Spaniard, John Rahm. Rahm nerveless and fairway found. A portent, perhaps, of what would follow. This is an incredible start to the Ryder Cup. There's nothing like that first tee on well, a Friday morning. The noise, the build up, the atmosphere, the energy. I mean, it's incredible. Blue skies framed the first tee on Friday morning as a crowd rich in color found their voice. The vast majority of them European fans. And it was they who would raise the first cheers of the day. Chances. Chances! John Rahm finds the cup on the third. A great three there for the Europeans. Takes them to one up in the match. John Rahm partnered with England's Tyrrell Hatton, built an early lead in the top match at the expense of Scotty Scheffler and Sam Burns. to a hole in one. What a start we are having to this Ryder Cup in Rome. Match play over 18 holes is a sprint. You have to get off to a fast start. Statistics back that up. Um, and if you can dominate those first six holes, um, you have a good opportunity to, for success. So this is the perfect start for us. We wanted to get up early and put the Americans under pressure. A shot that is outrageous. Four up through 14 holes, Rahm and Hatton had placed an early marker for Europe. Behind them, in match two, Victor Hovland looked to maintain that momentum. Hey, right in the hole. Oh, I knew it all along. Genius play. That's brilliant. Hovland, partnered with Ludwig Oberg,
claimed both the opening holes before their opponents responded to level the match. There we go. Cool, calm and calculating, Max Homer finds the bottom of the cup. The red resurgence proved short-lived though, instigating a blue backlash through the turn. This would take them three up. And the young European rookie strikes. In match three, yet more blue filled the scoreboard. Sepp Stracker and Shane Lowry soon two up through four holes. What a shot from Shane Lowry. Oh, that's Lowry. worked out really well off that left side, off the slope there. And look where that's finished. The 2019 Open champion at his creative best. But in Colin Morikawa and Ricky Fowler, they faced a dogged opponent. If he manages to hold this one, then the US team will win this hole. They are two down currently. Great view here. You can really see the slope and where they're trying to get the ball just to stop. Lovely touch. It did little to prevent the European onslaught, however. Lowry and Stracker combining to win three straight holes from the seventh. Swing there, Sepp. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful looking shot here from Sepp. Yeah, great shots. I mean, they're in full control of this. The morning's imbalance was less clear in match four, but Europe still made the early gains, this time courtesy of Rory McIlroy and Tommy Fleetwood. Should set up nicely for his draw. He likes to hit that shot. And it does suit nicely for his draw. Such was the European dominance Xander Schoffle and Patrick Cantlay found themselves two down through eight holes. Gave the last hole away. Making a better hash of this one. Good pitch there though, good shot. Battling back, but to little avail, as McElroy and Fleetwood soon reclaimed their two hole advantage. Heavy line for Tommy Fleetwood at 11. Surely not. <laughs> what a fantastic chip there by Tommy. Europe were off to a roaring start in Rome's first Ryder Cup. Midway through Friday morning, and the scoreboard awash with blue. The top match in particular, now close to its conclusion. Here's Hatton at 15. Round about 185 up the hill, 10. Good lie, though. Hatton can get it there, no problem. Thank you very much, says John Rahm. Hatton fires one into the heart of the green. A stunning approach from Tyrrell Hatton, and with Scheffler and Burns unable to find the 15th green in two, it was very much advantage Europe. John Rahm has the luxury of two parts here for the first point of the 2023 Ryder Cup. There's one thing for sure, there's going to be emotion here if he holds this one. Job done. And it is a victory for Rahm and Hatton over the world number one, Scotty Scheffler, and his great friend, Sam Burns. Four and three, the margin of victory there, and the first point of the Ryder Cup goes to the European team. Disappointment for Team USA's lead pair then. And behind in match two, Brian Harmon and Max Homer were rapidly running out of holes. Max Homer, green side at 15. Has to go in. Lovely chip there, though. Nice lie here for Hovland. This to win the match. Call as you like. 
What an inspired pairing. Unbelievable. Smiles, chip ins, and a victory for Aubert, the rookie. So that is the second point on the board for the Europeans. It's another four and three victory. As the partisan crowd cheered, the visitors continued to trail in the remaining two matches. Team USA desperately needed a response. Brave. Great part. Back to one. Two seventeen. Foul up out of the sand. Oh, he's held a few of these in his lifetime, hasn't he, Ricky Fowler? Wow, you called it there, Dom. I mean, that looks so good when it hit the green. My goodness. I mean, that looks so good. Zach and his vice captains can't believe he missed that there. Get to the Lowry. Oh, heavens. Heavens above. Yes, pressure right there. Yeah. This is for the victory for Sepp Stracker to win the match and add another point for Team Europe. Yeah! Europe three, the United States zero. One match left out on the course of these morning foursomes. So can't lay on the 17th tee, one down. Just have to hit the shot. It's par three, this comes at the right time as well. Wow. Something like that. Magnificent. That's what the Ryder Cup's about. To and fro. Yeah, purely pressure now. Just a nice seven iron for McElroy. Has to find the right level just to give your playing partner a chance. He might just need it. Might just need to make two. Line looks good. Oh, Rory, my God. Wow. Well, let's just let that speak for itself. That was pure class. How disappointed is he going to be with that one? Incredible, 4-0 Europe, what a start for Captain Donald. dominating fashion too i mean it's crazy i mean they just it felt like all their players played better than the u.s there was no luck about it there was no good fortune it was just that was complete domination from the euro squad i mean that's really impressive stuff <laughs> impressive indeed and history making too for never before had europe enjoyed a clean sweep of matches in the opening session of a Ryder cup Captain Donald's decision to open with foursomes for the first time in 30 years, seemingly vindicated in full. Having promised drama and intrigue, the opening exchanges of this Ryder Cup had more than delivered. A sweep of all four points had left the European team in an enviable position midway through day one. We're here as 12, you know, we're one of 12, each of us. We all have a role to play. And, you know, I think sitting someone 
uh, on that first day, even if they weren't feeling that great about their game, I think just shows a little lack of confidence in your team. So, you know, I wanted to show them that they were ready, that they could go out there and, and perform and, and contribute to our team score. It was a sentiment shared by the visitors. Zach Johnson also opting to field the four Americans who'd sat out the morning session. Major champions Wyndham Clark and Brooks Kepka both set to enter the arena, while spearheading the US assault on the afternoon four balls were a tried and tested pair. On the tee from the USA, Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth. Much expectation lay on the Americans' shoulders. Yet, just as they had done in the morning session, the hosts found their stride first. Not too shabby, Stevie. Tyrrell showed up there. What a great shot he's played from there. Tyrrell Hatton, now paired with Victor Hovland, was off to a flyer at the first. But the Americans remained unfazed. Absolutely brilliant. Jordan Spieth's birdie at the fourth hole was matched by his playing partner at the sixth. He's done it. The U.S. is leading in a match. And for the very first time in these matches, there was red on the board. We've waited eight hours for the U.S. Oh, my gosh. It's all gravy from here. To American dismay, it was a lead that lasted just 12 minutes. Hovland's tee shot at the very next hole, enough to level proceedings once again in the top match. In match two, the Americans had opted for experience once again. Scotty Scheffler and Brooks Kepka drawn against John Rahm and the Danish rookie Nikolai Hoygaard. Yet in this most highly charged environment, it was the latter who looked most comfortable. He's for a three. Unbelievable! What a start from the Dane! Boy, he looks comfortable on this golf course, right? Look at the reaction in the crowd. They have had so much to cheer out there today. The young Danes putter had earned his team a two-hole advantage. But the Americans responded, winning holes 9, 10 and 15. Got it. Magnificent putt from Kepka. You expect a lot of up and down and shifts of momentum. Um, and times during the Ryder Cup where it's not going your way. And certainly the US came back firing, we knew they would, but kept grinding and grinding and working hard. Wrong to give his partner a chance from 30 feet. This will get there all the way. He may have all it. Oh, he may have all it. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, what a shot from John Rahm. To match three, and finally, some momentum for America courtesy of the reigning U.S. Open champion, Wyndham Clark. Oh, it was really well done there. It was really nice. Into this back pin at nine. Won't leave any behind here. Oh. Just taken dead aim at that. Different game, that. What a shot that was. Clark and his partner, Max Homer, established a two-up lead at the turn. Robert McIntyre and Justin Rose needed to right the European ship. Well yeah. done, Justin. Great birdie. Back to one. One so much better than two. Pretty obvious, but it is. Still, the advantage lay with America in match three, but behind them, a different story. England's Matt Fitzpatrick Simply unstoppable. Are you kidding me? Loves to leave the pin in. Is one hell of a putter. He almost walked that in. My goodness, is he looking good right now? 
It is the size of a bucket out there. Man of the moment, five under par through five. Remarkably, it was not until the seventh hole that his teammate McElroy troubled the scorers. It's amazing, isn't it? Fitzpatrick's gone absolutely mad, and then just when he's missed one, Rory's come in. I mean, what a kick in the teeth that is. Colin Morikawa and Xander Schofle fought valiantly, reducing the deficit to four down through 14 holes. Signs of hope, perhaps, with the other three matches very much in the balance. There's always going to be some tough matches out there, and it looked at one point like the US were going to win the session three to one, and suddenly it's five three, and you know, game on. It's like you know, there's not much of a lead, and certainly leads of two points have been given up quite easily by the next day. So, you know, um, there's three matches: you know, Rambo and Nikolai, Rosie and Bob, and Victor and Tyrrell. You know, they were fighting out there. Nice level lie right into the sun, which is always a little bit tough. 95 yards, going to play a couple downhill. Oh, that's okay. It's five out of ten. That's beautiful. Maybe in. Very nearly dropped it. Second into 15 for Rory McElroy in the final match. Four up with four to play. Hoisting it straight up in the air, lands on the front. Best shot we've seen all day. Heck of a shot from Rory. Basically slamming the door on the US team. This the moment ahead of Scotty Scheffler to guarantee the US half a point. Come on, Hunter, give us it. Come on. Well, yeah, half a point is something right now. That's more than we have. So, Scotty up hill right in the middle. The US going to get on the board with half a point here from this group. Wow, what a, I mean. Incredible golf the last few holes. Victor Hovland at 18. You have to think that this one, once it gets up on top, wants to break from left to right. Oh, my goodness me. It never looked like it was getting there, but it's there, and it's right in the middle. He's been a warrior today. Big putt now for Justin Thomas. You've got to keep it inside the hole and hit it firm. Nothing to be gained by missing. Take some break out, knock it in. Well done, Justin Thomas. Brave, brave putt. Tied match. He's the one that kept him in it, especially the last four or five holes. The doubters might have been a little silenced by that, you think. Half a point each way. Back to 15 green. Xander Schauffele needs to hold this to keep it going in the final match. McElroy still had a pop for three from 10 feet, so that's that match over. Five and three. They were magnificent. McElroy and Fitzpatrick. 17th Homer and Clark putt to win the match for both these rookies. Homer's already played three, so he's not got a say in it. It's this man. Yeah. Back to one with one oh. to go. Next up to Scheffler. If he gets inside his partner's four feet, he's done really well. Good distance, just got it too far right and it kicked right and then just kept going. But, you know, they've got the one up lead. It's going to be Ram with an eagle chance coming next. 
Good and good. Yeah, this is, this is difficult. It really is, Ali, from under the hill. Ask him, use your get. I don't believe that. That is just unbelievable. What a finish. What a finish from John Rahm. Oh. Eagle par eagle, the last three from Rahm to tie the match down 18. Near on unthinkable. Justin Rose. There's a little ridge in front of that flag. He's got to fly it all the way to the hole. It's going to take a hop forward and then should be able to put plenty of spin for it to come back, but got to get it there. Just like that. Well played, incredible distance. Inside Max, I mean, they're, they're looking good here. I mean, they just keep, just keep plugging along. Captain Donald, you probably can't believe what it seemed today. Couldn't have asked for a better start to the Ryder Cup as captaincy. For the first full point of the day for the USA. And two all in this section. Four ball matches. It wasn't to be. It gives Rose an opportunity now to steal another half point. This to tie the match. Just extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. What a day for Europe. Wow. What a day indeed. At one stage, it seemed as though America might claim three of the four available points in Friday's four balls. Yet amid the lengthening shadows, the scoreboard told a different tale. Europe six and a half, USA one and a half. The opening day unquestionably belonged to the hosts. Good morning and welcome to day two of the 44th Ryder Cup here at Marco Simone. Saturday morning, and the European support arrived in buoyant mood. It was understandable too, given how the previous 24 hours had played out. Momentum is huge, and we created history um, that Friday morning. No team for Europe had ever won the morning sessions for nothing in foursomes. And so it was a pretty straightforward conversation uh, with myself and the vice captains. We had to put those four groups out again. You know, they were high on confidence. There's another 20 points out there to be won, so let's not rest here. I mean, we're off to a great start, but, uh, you know, the Americans could go win the next 20 points and it would be a, a terrible, terrible uh, defeat. So, you know, we had to make sure we weren't complacent. Aiming to replicate the success of Friday morning, Luke Donald made no change to his foursomes pairings. A mere reorder, the only difference for day two. Zach Johnson, meanwhile, kept faith with Homer and Harmon, likewise Cantlay and Chauffle. But he rang changes too, and it threw up some mouth-watering ties. This is match number one, representing the USA, Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth. <laughs> Rory McIlroy and Tommy Fleetwood. <laughs> Buoyed by the vociferous home crowd, Europe's league pair began brightly, winning the first hole with par and the second with birdie. I mean, right in the middle there, really. US two down quickly. This first match, Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood was firing, neatly dovetailed with his partner. Looks okay. Anthony maybe drifting a bit right. No, no, look at this. Look at this shot from Michael Wright. Europe's lead pair were proving well balanced. Yet it was behind them in match two that history beckoned. Victor Hovland and Ludwig Oberg combining to dramatic effect. 
What a shot! The Scandinavians rapidly fought up over Scheffler and Kepka through four holes. For Victor and Ludwig, this is going to be a partnership that will stand the test of time. This could be talked in the same breath as a Sevian and Oli. You know, um, no, no pressure, guys. But you know, I really believe that these guys can feed off each other and um, will be very strong for years to come. What else is new from this guy? I mean, just been a stir all week. That'll feed back down a little bit. The Scandinavian duo were unwavering and overwhelming. Yet behind, in match three, a far tighter tussle emerged. Yeah, wonderful shot there. Over the course of the front nine, Max Homer and Brian Harmon went ahead on three separate occasions, only for Seb Straka and Shane Lowry to rein them back. Right. Be right. Oh. What a wonderful shot from Lowry, open champion. The final match saw Tyrrell Hatton and John Rahm resume their partnership so successfully forged on Friday. And the outcome felt familiar too. Wow. The Europeans moved two up through six holes. Cantley and Chauflet battling to stay in touch. Try as the American duo might, it felt just a matter of time before Rahm and Hatton would further extend their advantage. A little left to right. Oh, that's magnificent. They're just not, not giving them anything. Three up. Mid-morning Saturday, and the scoreboard was once again awash with European blue. The hosts ahead in all but match three, and confirmation of the day's first point felt not far away. Two great players. The Europeans just been too good for them today. They're off to a flyer. Played with nonchalance, game over, nine and seven. You know, we created something that's never been done before. Uh, it's the biggest margin of victory. You know, to take down the world number one and a five-time major champion, you know, one of the most clutch players in the last 10 years on the golf course in Brooks Kepka. I mean, you know, I think that sent a strong message to uh, to our boys, um, and um, you know, was was quite devastating for the U.S. team. The onus was on the Americans to respond, and in the top group, Jordan Spieth dutifully took up the mantle. There's the fire they need. Spieth and Thomas combined for birdies at 13 and 14, but their opponents responded at the par 4 15th. Oh, he's done it. Look at the emotion, Rory. What a big, big three that is. Brilliant, back to two up. With no respite for the US team there, attention shifted to Max Homer, aiming to turn US fortunes around in match three. Hello, hello. What a magnificent shot from Max Homer. Eagle at the 12th hole would take Homer and Harmon three up with six to play. Moments later, at the very same hole, Patrick Cantlay looked to follow suit. Brilliant. We've seen some unbelievable shots in this hole today, and it continues. That's a heck of a shot. 
That approach instigated a run of Eagle Birdie Birdie for Cantley and his partner Chauflet. And just like that, the complexion had changed for America. Ahead in one, tied in one, and now only narrowly trailing in the other. Half a club short for Rory will be perfect. What do you yeah. think, Tony? Yeah, absolutely. Won the match in style here yesterday. Also leaking a little bit right. Oh, there it is. There it is, that one little bounce. Rory wondering, where the heck is it? I can't see it, I can't see it. Well, don't worry, you're in a lot better position than your opponents. Let's go to Strucker at 16 and Eagle Putt. Is it? Is it going to be the Tiger Woods moment? Well, this match could end right here. Hello. Oh, Max Homer. And it is the first victory this week for the United States of America. What a way to do it. A 4 and 2 win for Homer and Harmon over Lowry and Strucker. To Thomas, third shot now for the Americans at the 17th. One away. The best they can do is four. Remember, the Europeans are on the fringe. It is slick from over there. Two putts for the match. It's not stopping. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I could go off the green. Um... Not really sure what happened there. I, I have no explanation for that. Just surprised slightly Fleetwood hitting that so hard. It was sitting okay, but it really just needed to get it out of the rough. This is back up the hill. Just steady yourself and focus on the job in hand for Rory. Huge, I mean, my gosh. What a putt, what a putt. Yes, McElroy does it again at 17, and that is another point on the board for Team Europe. Eight and a half to two and a half now, with a two and one victory. Captain Donald had yet further cause for optimism, his team having gained the advantage in the final match too. Rahm and Hatton win in the 16th hole with Birdie. Now, one up on the 17th tee. So John Rahm, he's got a real opportunity, hasn't he, to apply a little bit more pressure if he can get it on that green. It's in. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. This is unbelievable, isn't it? What a shot from John Rahm. What a time to do it as well as he turns the screw. Cantley's going to go close too, you'd think. Should have asked him to mark it probably, but that's okay. Well, it honestly helps. He just saw it, right? He just saw what to do. It's in your mind already. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Not done. Not out of it yet. Wow. What a response. What golf, Hunter? What golf? My goodness me. Patrick Cantley is given the chance for the Americans to get out of this hole with a tie, to go down the 18th. How are the nerves on this one? Kind of identical to the last hole. Wow. It's over. Two and one to the Europeans. Another point goes on the board, another blue point. For a significant period of Saturday morning, America had been in the ascendancy. Yet once again, another session belongs to Europe. Three points to one the margin, as the overall tally rises to nine and a half, two and a half. Time ticking for Team USA to mount a response in Rome.
Saturday afternoon in Rome, and the Ryder Cup scoreboard made grim reading for the visitors. Europe ahead by a full seven points. Time undoubtedly running out for Team USA to mount a response. In a bid to reverse American fortunes, Captain Johnson shuffled his pack. Thomas and Spieth, the only US pairing from Friday's four-ball session, to resume their acquaintance. Europe, meanwhile, opted to lead with Hovland and Oberg, fresh from their nine and seven morning demolition of Scotty Scheffler and Brooks Kepka. Their afternoon opponents, Colin Morikawa and Sam Burns. Oh, perfect pace, drops it right in the middle. Good start for America. Burns hadn't played since the very opening session and his rest period appeared to have paid dividends. There you go. They finally turned up. Burns had set the tone in the top match and Morikawa more than played his part too. Colin Morikawa, there it is. Boy, you know, seeing Burns and Morikawa out there, man, these guys have really brought it today. Up to this stage, the USA's only full point had come courtesy of Brian Harmon and Max Homer, and the pair were once again firing in the four balls. Well done, gonna use the slope, rolling to the hole, getting better and better. About six feet there, great shot. The rookies offered hope to the visiting fans, racing four up against Tommy Fleetwood and Nikolai Hoygaard. Beautiful pack. I don't know. I'm saying a few of them this week. Some American noise from the crowd, finally. He stiffed it here yesterday, just striped a high draw, trying to replicate that shot. Looks like he did that. Wow, Max Homa. What a shot. Homer and Harmon had breathed life back into the American campaign, and behind them, in match three, Jordan Spieth looked to follow suit. It looks like he's hit one, or is it turning left as well? Not much. Beautiful shot from Spieth. Partnered once again with Justin Thomas, their opposition came courtesy of Justin Rose and the young Scot, Robert McIntyre. Unlucky there, Bob. Wow, that just stopped and came back a chance to come in. The Americans' early lead, unraveled by European birdies at holes nine and ten. Man, has he been good today with the putter. To protect a lead is never easy, especially in a Ryder Cup under that pressure. But again, we tried to use the crowd, we tried to use their energy. I think they were they were amazing. They pulled our guys up. The Americans' goal was to quiet the crowd. That means that the momentum is on their side, and they had hope. You know, they had a little glimmer of hope, and that's what we didn't want to give them. McElroy at the fourth. He was striding after that, Rory. He has got a pep in his step. the leaderboard. In match four, McElroy and Fitzpatrick led one up from the fourth hole, only for Wyndham Clark and Patrick Cantley to peg them back at 11. No mistake. Yeah, well done. A lot of carnage on that hole. Birdie wins it. Midway through the afternoon, and very little separated the teams in the bottom two matches. Ahead, though, America found themselves in comfortable control. Burns at 15 over the back. Oh. 
Well played shot. A little pitch shot up in the face. That's a good thing. He had a ton of green to work with there. That was well, well played. And this apart from Ludwig Aberg to keep this match going. Oh, boy. U.S. with two short par putts to win the match. Well done, Sam. It's a great effort today. The first point of the afternoon four balls goes the way of the United States. Cause for optimism then for the United States. In the remaining matches, however, there have begun some semblance of a European fight back. 16, Fleetwood. He would. He would. By Jove, he would. Tommy Fleetwood keeps things chucking along. A blue surge followed in match three as well, courtesy of Robert McIntyre. Sends the wedge on the way. How close can you get it? Needs some spin, gets it. This will get better. And better. Well played shot. Birdie, there at 13. And another at 14. Maneuvered McIntyre and Rose three up. Minutes later, at the same hole, a chance for Rory McIlroy to maintain momentum in match four. Does it? It does. There we go, the Rory Roar. And so Europe led in the bottom two matches. But ahead at 17, Fleetwood and Hoygaard were running out of holes. Brian Harmon and Max Homer remained in charge. This to win the match for Homa for a two, it's an unlikely make. He's got to go up and over a mound, and once it goes over the top of it, it's going to be breaking left to right inside of three feet. If he can get it inside of Harmon, he's doing pretty well. I don't think he did. Boy, nothing's easy at this stage. It's a nasty pin there. They put on 17, that's devilish. This is not an easy one for Fleetwood. It's uphill right to left before he reaches the green, then it's downhill right to left to the hole. Clearly can't leave it short. Stop it. Stop it. Good try. Good try. In some ways fitting if Max Homer would have finished it off the way he's played out there. Beautiful from Max. Well earned. Yeah, second point of the afternoon has been decided, and the second point of the afternoon goes to the United States. So they close the gap a little bit more. Nine and a half to four and a half with two matches still live out on the course now. The Europe are up in both of them. We'll go over to 16. But this could take the spoils right here and now. Remarkable from Justin Rose. He seizes the moment. And he grabs the first point of the afternoon for the European team. They move to ten and a half and within four points are winning the Ryder Cup. Reward for Rose and McIntyre placed greater significance on the day's sole remaining match, in which Wyndham Clark and Patrick Cantlay were now tied with McElroy and Fitzpatrick, with just one hole to play. And now Cantlay, what a time this would be to go ahead for the first time in the match. Oh boy. You'd have to say he was unlucky, he's drawn a bad lie there. I thought he was going to just pop it down there, but man, it was a nasty, nasty lie. 
This is a huge moment, though, isn't it? Because if Cantley manages somehow to find the bottom of the cup here, they can still win the hole. And win the session three to one. For the birdie. Maybe. Maybe. Patrick Cantley finds one at 18. What a putt. Two chances for Europe here to tie this match. McElroy first. No. Five for McElroy at the last. The limelight, the pressure, the opportunity moves over to Matthew Fitzpatrick. Fitzy has his own on tour. Could this be it? Wow. What a scene. What a moment. Oh no, God! <laughs> I short, geez. What a match by the U.S. team. They win the session three to one. And they will go into the final day five points behind Team Europe. Twice in history have a team recovered from a four-point deficit on Saturday night. But if the Americans plan to miraculously emerge victorious this year in Rome, they would have to top those efforts. They have momentum on their side, but trail by five. The first Sunday in October, and dawn breaks over the Eternal City. Down on the banks of the River Tiber, it's clear to sense the approach of something special. Fifteen miles east, Marco Simoni Golf and Country Club awaits its day in the sun. Backdrop as it is to the 44th edition of golf's most compelling team event. A crowd both large in number and high in expectation have arrived to witness the culmination of an already spectacular contest. Good morning and welcome to the final day of the 44th Ryder Cup here at Marco Simone and it is quite the scene here in Italy. After two days of competition, advantage lay very much with the home side. Europe ahead by a record margin, ten and a half points to five and a half. To little surprise, both captains had opted to send their highest ranked players out early in a bid to grasp momentum. Probably over the course of the history of the Ryder Cup, I think US have, have done a little better in singles. They're, they're very good, you know, that's really in their element. I knew they were going to be strong. And so I needed to put out some strong players uh, at the beginning. This is match number one, representing the United States of America, Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> representing Europe, John Rahm. Ever a man for the big occasion, the Spaniard looked to set the tone at the opening hole. Straight. It's in. John Rahm gets Europe off to an absolute flyer. John, obviously, I had a lot of faith in him, and uh, his match with Scotty was unbelievable. Back and forward, um, just a, a great match and great golf. Most people tend to just err on the side of caution with his flag, a little bit right of it. Oh, John Rahm, though. That's what you do when you just win the hole and you want to put your partner under pressure. Three times, Rahm led his opponent, only to be reeled back in. Team USA's lead-off man, the world number one, forging ahead, one up through 15 holes. 
Can he hit his irons or what there? It's just amazing. Behind in match two, however, Victor Hovland balanced the books against Colin Morikawa. Yeah, great shot there. The Norwegian went three up through six holes. And when the two-time major champion failed to convert from 12 feet at the 15th, the first point of the day went the way of Europe. Oh, gosh, that's just so disappointing if you're Colin. Just could not get any momentum. Congratulations to Victor. Enjoy it. Ahead at the 18th green, Rahm remained one down to Scheffler. But a chance to draw level had materialized. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, wow. Now, you can't really call a putt shot of the week, but it was damn near it, let me tell you. What a great effort from John Rahm. So he's got the birdie. And it means that Scheffler is going to have to chip in from the bank there at the back of the green. Oh, well, sir, it's a match tied. And the spoils are shared between these two great gladiators, John Rahm and Scotty Scheffler. A missed opportunity, perhaps. But better news did soon arrive for the USA, delivered by Patrick Cantley in match three. Looks good, right in the middle. Patrick wins two and one against Justin Rose. Gets the US to seven. Team USA now heading in the right direction. But several significant obstacles remained. Among them, Rory McIlroy. Big high draw. That's wow. such a good shot, isn't it? You see how high it goes, it still baffles me. And Tyrrell Hatton. <laughs> Rory did what he did and Tyrrell played amazing. You know, and it was just great to see, you know, these guys I had faith in at the beginning of the, the roster to, to produce. Burns chipping over a ridge, has to make it to continue. Oh. oh, what an effort there from Sam Burns. Putting everything into that last chance saloon as the cap comes off. And it's another point to the Europeans, secured by Rory McElroy. Tyrrell Hatton. Yes, you can take the applause. What a bunker shot. Harmon has the hole now to keep the match alive. He's great at these distances, but he's got to have it. Or the European side gets another point. Well done. So Europe cannot lose the Ryder Cup. They need a half point now for the victory. Europe's top order had done the job asked of them. The hosts now on the verge of glory in Rome. But below, much red had begun to appear on the scoreboard. Match seven among them, in which Brooks Kepka had the beating of Ludwig Oberg, three and two. Kepka to win the match against Ludwig Oberg. Jams it in the hole. And it is a victory for the five-time major champion, Brooks Kepka. For the States to stand a chance, they would need to capitalize on Kepka's triumph. Arguably their best performer this week, Max Homer, led Matt Fitzpatrick, albeit narrowly. Yeah, just judged the spin perfectly. One bounce check in the hill, just let it dribble over the hill like a putt. Super chip. His English opponent was one down on the final green, but with a chance to make history. 
Fitzpatrick, this to win the Ryder Cup for Europe. Still got work to do, it's a chance now for Homer to get that all important part for the USA. It's needed. Justin Rose can't watch. Wow, so much on the line from Max Oma and he pours it in. Wow. And no. the Europeans are going to have to go find another place another to celebrate. Point. Tied with Nikolai Hoygaard at the turn, Xander Schofle also proved his mettle over the back nine, arriving at the 16th hole, two up. Looks good. Looks very good. Excellent from Xander Schofle. Up to win the match now. Nicely done from Xander. And just like that, momentum had shifted. The USA had claimed three straight matches. Only four remained out on the course, and the Americans were very much alive in all of them. Remember, were they to win them all, they would retain the Ryder Cup. I felt like we were on 14 points for an eternity, forever, and, you know, Bob lost a hole and went back to level. Tommy lost a hole, went from two up to one up. And then you just feel like this momentum was like shifting in their way. You look at the board and you're like, well, where do I get this half point? Back at nine, Tommy Fleetwood. Natural square, tied. This one's heading forward and in! Tommy Fleetwood strikes again. Tommy Fleetwood and his counterpart, Ricky Fowler, had battled hard all day. But as the pair reached the 16th tee, it was the Englishman in the driving seat. 16, foul up, one down. Hang on, gotta hang on. Well, the win here for Europe, that would do it, two up and two to go. Fleetwood's still got to go. Best drive of his life. That is just magnificent, right in the middle of the green. It's the stop. Uh, and it does. What a time to hit the shot of your life. could well be down to Tommy Fleetwood, who has two putts to win the hole and to win the Ryder Cup for Europe. He knows the significance of that. The half point is guaranteed, even though the match will have to come to a conclusion. Amazing. Fantastic. So Seb Stryker right now can win the Ryder Cup for Europe. Well, I don't want to say what could happen. Well, it's a fine effort, but that's going to be that because Thomas has two for it. Great win for Thomas. Yep, and a point to the USA. Here we go to 17. Ricky Fowler needs to hold this one. Otherwise, it is all going to be confirmed. The scoreboard will change. Tommy Fleetwood wins that match three and one. Europe get the point. And it is Europe who wrestle back the Ryder Cup here in Rome. Elation then for Europe. Two years on from a record-breaking defeat in Wisconsin. The trophy now reclaimed in Rome. Celebrations briefly remained on hold as the two final matches reached their own conclusions. A two-and-one victory over Wyndham Clark 
sealing an unforgettable week for rookie Robert McIntyre. Amazing week for the Scotsman, one he will never forget. Before Shane Lowry and Jordan Spieth officially brought the curtain down on proceedings. The final score at Marco Simoni read 16 and a half, 11 and a half. A tally that in truth belied what had been a thrilling and competitive tussle between two fantastic sides here in the foothills of Rome. Just so much emotion for it to finally like come off. It was like a, it was a relief. Surrounded by my team, and I couldn't have wished for anything better to have that trophy and all of us go up, you know, and lift that trophy together, and the the streamers going off. Yeah, that was a moment I'll always remember. Rome's Ryder Cup is one that will live long in the memory. Fitting for an event played against the backdrop of such history.